What's up everyone? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll address sealing a pipe penetration through a foundation wall. In this specific case, I will seal a PVC septic pipe running through a concrete foundation wall where outdoor groundwater is leaking through between the pipe and the wall. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Now, let's get started. First, just use this as a reference for possible solutions. There may be better solutions for your specific circumstances, but I'll show you what I did to provide some possible options to get you started. So here's the pipe, first viewed from the outdoors. The pipe is below ground, with the top of the pipe pretty much at ground level. And here is the pipe from the inside, where it penetrates through the concrete wall. There is a small clearance gap around the pipe, between the plastic and the concrete. There were some water issues identified, and the drywall was 100% saturated below the pipe all the way to the floor. Removing some additional ceiling tiles for additional access. Dirt was found on the top of the ceiling tiles and at the bottom of the pipe penetration. So, water and dirt were entering from the outdoors through the pipe penetration. To be able to address this, I cleared out some space. I removed some drywall around the pipe. To get additional access, I'll need to remove all of this drywall since it's wet, but this will get us started. Taking a look, there's a gap all the way around the pipe, and definitely dirt coming in on the bottom. This needs to be thoroughly cleaned up, because I'm going to inject this gap full of sealant. First, I cleaned it out. I used a screwdriver to scrape out all the large debris, then a vacuum to suck out what I could. I also used a small brush and scrubbed out as far back as it could reach. In addition, I equipped the end of the vacuum hose with a small tube to reach back there and clean as far back in the hole as possible. It's just a straw from a tumbler cup. It'll clean up no problem, and I don't use those cups anyway. Now, let's talk about sealants. There are a large variety of different sealants available. Here are a few that I have left over from different projects. For example, silicone is pretty much currently the boss of sealants in regard to weather and temperature resistance and lifespan. This would be my personal choice for material. However, I am not confident in the ability to fill every void, crack, and crevice in that penetration. I want the entire thing full. Otherwise, if any water gets in, it'll find somewhere to go. Another option is hydraulic cement. This is made to stop water leaks through concrete. If your void looks like mine, but on the outside, this is a great option. But for me personally, like the silicone, I was not confident in the ability to pack the entire void full from the inside. I turned my attention to expanding foam sealants. When you spray them in, they expand to three times their size to push through and fill every little crack and crevice. I wanted to ensure that the water path would be filled and sealed. I specifically used the Loctite Tight Foam. It shows a picture of a pipe penetration through concrete on the front picture. It's advertised as high density, adheres to stone, brick, and PVC, flexible to withstand building movements, and seals out air and moisture. It's a polyurethane-based sealant for sealing gaps and cracks indoors and outdoors. And yes, I am very familiar with Great Stuff, which is probably the most popular gaps and cracks expanding foam polyurethane-based sealer. I have used it many times. Quickly comparing the two, with Great Stuff on the left and the Loctite on the right, the Loctite seems more dense to me. I know this isn't the best comparison. I have it on my list to do a proper comparison video in the future. Great stuff versus Loctite. I'll do much better testing, but for this project, I personally prefer the Loctite and I use the Loctite. I plan to temporarily seal this gap around the pipe, so when I inject the expanding foam sealant, it will be forced to expand into all the gaps and cracks and not just come back out of the front. To begin, I measured the circumference of the pipe. Using some easy math, I calculated the diameter and used a compass to draw a circle. This is the hole that the pipe will go through. I'm just doing it cheap and easy. This is a piece of PVC board that I had laying around. I cut out the inner diameter of the pipe by first drilling a pilot hole, then going around with a the jigsaw. Then I cut the outer diameter. 
This will seat on the concrete wall. I did have to split it in order to be able to install it around the pipe. And last, I drilled a small hole for the applicator tube to be installed. Back at the site, I installed the split cover around the pipe. Then, I went around it with hot glue to seal it around the outside diameter and the inside diameter. Remember that this is intended to be a cheap, easy, temporary cover. I just need something to hold the expanding foam in while it expands. On the outside, I dug all the way around the pipe. So anything that needs to expand out has an open path. Time to apply the sealant. First, shake it up vigorously for 30 seconds. Then put on gloves. Anything this stuff touches, it'll stick to. It'll get stuck on your hands and ruin your clothes. So put on gloves. I did not put gloves on because I intended it all to stay in the wall. But definitely wear gloves. Then I inserted the applicator all the way into the hole. Then began to apply it. The can must be upside down when applying it. I unloaded this can for a while. Like a minute. I think I put the whole can in there. It felt empty when I took it out. And I began to see the power of the expansion. It started pushing through every little gap and crack that it could. It started to ribbon out around the pipe. And blammo! It blew out the hot glue seal. So that's the end of that. I let it cure for a couple days and then came back to it. So here we are a couple days later. It's all firmed up and cured. I was pleased to see that it pushed its way through many tight gaps and cracks. I imagine the paths of the water leak are sealed up as well. I intended to remove this temporary cover when this process was complete and just cut the sealant flush with the wall. But I ended up leaving it in place. Why not? It's not hurting anything. And I can remove it at a later time in the future if desired. So that wraps up the inside. Let's go outside and finish the job. On the outside, the concrete is pretty well sealed up to the tube. But look what I found. Loctite. It forced its way through the path. I was pleased to see that. But in addition, I'm also going to seal around this joint as well. But first, taking a quick look at the bottom of the pipe, this is where the Loctite pushed through. This is where the open path was into the house. I cleaned the joint up well with the brush, water, and rags. I got it as clean as I could. For the sealant, I personally decided to use something that I already own. I considered the roof caulk is specifically designed for outdoor use and different temperature ranges and to be waterproof and it's pretty much what's supplied to the exterior of foundation walls before they get backfilled. Tar! However, it specifically says, do not use on PVCs, so keep that in mind. I ended up using the Quickcrete's Advanced Polymer Concrete Crack Sealant. It is specifically made for the outdoors, to bond with concrete, permanently seals and waterproofs, and it is safe to use with plastic. So, from the sealants that I had, that's what I decided to use. I caulked a healthy bead all the way around the joint, and I manually filled in what I could not reach with the caulk gun. And a couple days later, the sealant is cured. There's a good seal around this. I left some rocks below the pipe, so any groundwater that gets down there will drain through and not stagnate. Then I backfilled it sloping the dirt away from the house. And since then, I've gotten plenty of rain. With no issues in regard to water coming in, there are definitely other options. This is what I did, using some materials that I had on hand. Maybe this will provide some ideas or information to help you get started. So, that wraps up this video. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Drop any comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.